Well, hello all, welcome back. I'm Alan, this is Alan Reacts, my little corner of YouTube. And we're here for a very special reason today. A, because it's Stevie Ray Vaughan. But that's not the only special reason today. I'm going to open the first minute of the track and I'm going to tell you why it's a bit of a celebration. Let's get into it. Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble with Riviera Paradise. Today is the 21st of October. Keep that date in mind, people. This one goes out to everybody who's still suffering in any way. So, why are we here today? Firstly, it's Steve Ray Vaughan, why wouldn't we be? A track I've been asked to do a lot of times, and on a couple of occasions, um, I've been close to it, but I've done another Stevie Ray track, but I've always listed it. And I've got, we've got a long time friend on the channel and her daughter contacted me and said, hello, I'm the daughter of your long time friend who thinks, who is Stevie Ray Vaughan's number one fan. I'm never going to argue with who anybody thinks they're Stevie Ray Vaughan's number one fan, but I do know she's been very kind, very humble and very supportive of the channel for quite some time now a couple of years at least. Harriet, it's your birthday today. It's the 21st of October. I want to personally wish you a very, very happy birthday. Um, your daughter, she messaged me and she subscribed. And that's what everyone should do, joking. And we had a little conversation and I was like, of course I would. I was going to anyway, Harriet. We, you've mentioned this track to me on multiple occasions along with other artists, you know, your, your Marcus Kings, your Billy Strings, and all sorts, different times you've guided me along, and everybody is, but Harriet, I hope you have a lovely, lovely, I hope you've had a lovely day. I hope you continue to have lots more lovely days. Um, and I genuinely mean it. I never formed the channel in order to get a community. The community forms itself, and people who interact are genuine music lovers. I've had very little chastisement on the channel, maybe three times in three years. And Harriet, thank you so much. And for the last time, have a lovely happy birthday. I want everyone in the comment in the box, happy birthday, Harriet. She deserves it, we all deserve it. And it's not Trouble Days Ahead, which is where Stevie opens the line. This is music, joyous. I don't know this is off the album in trip 1989 the fourth and final studio album with double trouble and we all know what sadly passed happened in 1990 I think this is is this the last track on the album on the second side I'm not sure it's purely musical that much I know and I always have difficult with not with conveying emotions around music but it's 
it's easier to convey lyrics of a song when they have a meaning. But it's more difficult if you're not an expert musician to try and tell you what they're doing. Because there's other guys on here, the Beatos and Michael Parmesano and, and Phil at Wings of Pegasus. They can tell you exactly what's going on here in cage system, what he's doing and using the whammy bar to create an higher octave, the string bending, the Albert Collins, Albert King connections, all those different things. And I have a little bit of that knowledge, but not like them. But when I hear the open line of the song, basically Stevie Ray Vaughan's telling you this is for anyone who's still suffering or is getting beyond suffering. He op leaves it open a little bit. And we'll come back to those who don't know and those who do. It's just me learning, so stick with me, guys. But I love it. and it, You can feel some influences and why Riviera and what my link to another song is. Yeah. But it's Stevie Ray Vaughan, right? Yeah. Definitely influence, it's got jazz influence in it. It's gets some complex chord structures in there. <coughs> Sorry guys, I've had a cold. But it's got a real mellowness to it, a real smoothness. You know, I can't hear the hi-hats, but it's simple percussion. And I say simple because it sounds very simple, which means it's not, I know, what you're talking about, Alan. And he's using that whammy bar, it's a beautiful effect. But it's not frenetic. It's got a bluesy feel to it. Clearly, it's still influenced by blues, but it's not frenetic. It's relying, you're, I mean, relying on guitar work. There's a, it's cleaner, very clean. And it's definitely influenced by jazz, and I can think of one particular player. And there's a song on the channel when I talk about the Riviera, and we'll come to that in a bit. But this is just beautiful. And it's... It's not a roller coaster, it's a levelling. There's an intensity, there's a warmth, there's a gentleness to it. That's what I can feel. Yeah. There's your jazz influence.
I'm smiling because you've got the band right. We all know. We've talked about this before, guys, haven't we? Uh, they're all world class musicians. And I've talked about this with Roy Gallagher letting people go to play the, their own solos while he were doing a compliment. And here you've got another world class, absolutely iconic guitarist. And he's just playing rhythm and letting the guys do their work on keyboard. And whilst I know musically it's right, and I know there's no ego in this, I, if I was Steve Rayburn on stage, I'd be like, shut up. I'd be giving it all that. And it's beautiful. And Riviera. So there's two Rivieras, really. There's the French Riviera, and there's the Italian Riviera, Genoa, Tuscany, that way down. And I've been to Tuscany on that Riviera and I've talked about this in another song and it's Wes Montgomery, Rainy Days, I think. Um, it's on the track. I'll actually put it in the description because I do talk about that making me feel like I'm back in Italy on the Riviera, heading from Tusk via Reggio to, to, down to Florence on the train, getting into Florence and seeing all those beautiful things and walking the coastline at night. And, and I went to a little place, I think it was called Monteverde up in the mountains. And when I think of that, I can't think of any other type of music I want to listen to other than jazz. And I'm not a jazz aficionado, guys. I'm really not. And this isn't directly jazz, but it's certainly subtle influences and it's certainly more octave, which when you've got to go and listen to that song by Wes Montgomery. Played with his thumbs, really, really innovative in the 60s past. He had a heart attack, I think, I seem to remember, on stage, if I remember rightly. Born in the 20s, died in the late 60s, I think. But you can hear it there. And if there's not an article out there where, or, or somewhere that someone can tell me where Stevie Ray Vaughan saying, of course, <laughs> where's Montgomery? Yeah, absolutely, jazz aficionado, of course. A brilliant player, of course. I'm influenced a little bit by him. I'd be surprised if that doesn't exist. Let's carry on. Go on, Reese. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. What did he just do with his thumbs there when I'm talking about Wes Montgomery? He did. I'm not imagining that, am I? Really just him, the band showing 
less intricacy, very complicated. But it's really about melody and mood, isn't it, guys? And I almost feel like, I mean, 1989 for me was a transitional year. I was leaving the forces. Um, I was about to go into civilian life. Nothing greatly impactful, but it's definitely a change. But when I think about this song, it's like the song is a dance partner. If you're on your own and you don't have that wonderful opportunity to have someone to dance with, because this is definitely, this is definitely for me, something you could take your wife or your husband by the hand, your girlfriend, whoever, your granddaughter at the dance, and you could just enjoy this. It's got that connection. And if you haven't got the connection physically, the song will be your dance partner, because it is for me at the moment. Yeah. That smile at the end says it all. Is this an opus? It's distinctive. It certainly stands away from a lot of the work he's done. Is it pivotal? Was this where he was going to go? Would he have ended up at jazz at 70, 71? <laughs> I know one thing, though. It's definitely genius. And Harriet... It was worth every second of listening to this, knowing and hoping that you've had a deserved happy birthday. Till next time, guys, take care. Join in if you like. I can't make you. Look for Wes Montgomery in the description. Go and listen to it if you don't know it. And tell me he's not amazing. Also, take care, guys. <laughs>